Hey guys, Nick Wheeler here again at Wheeler Custom Eyes. In this video, we're going to be going over the hand finishing of one of the Joe Perny Fighting Bowie Knife Handles. Uh, this is the same one we were working on in the last video, the Black G10 416 Stainless Guard. And I'm going to show the process I use to, to dial in the shape and get a nice uniform, consistent finish on, on the handle and guard. Uh, I want to make it clear, uh, you know, we're not going to be talking about applying any type of a, a finishing agent, you know, no polyurethane or anything like that. Uh, this is simply going to be refining the shape and getting the consistent finish on the whole handle with, with our handwork. If you stick around, I'll show how I do that. We'll, we'll talk about some of the tools here. Um, if you watch my hand sanding videos, there will be some crossover here. Some of these tools are very similar. There's even a couple that I use um, for both parts of the, the process, so they should look familiar to you. Um, a lot of guys kind of like to make fun of me because I have these, they say uh, you know, Wheeler uses like kitchen spoons and whatnot, but I've come up with these paddle type sanding bars and I've got a few reasons for these. Uh, number one is ergonomics. As I think I've mentioned that I've broken my, my left arm and hand three times in my life and I don't want to do anything to uh, exacerbate those injuries and uh, you know, screw up my knife making from here on out so I'm mindful of that and then the the muscles in our hands and our fingers are, are relatively small and they're quickly and easily fatigued and so if we can have some ergonomics to our, our hand finishing tools it'll just help alleviate that let us do things faster and easier and, and uh, avoid being in pain when we're doing stuff. Another thing that's really important on these is our backing material. Uh, there's some times where you're going to want a really soft backer material, or sometimes where you're going to want a really rigid backing material, and uh, I'll kind of discuss that as we go. And of course there's going to be different uh, sizes, We've got some that are different shapes, and pretty much we're just going to be using hand tools like that, and sandpaper, and uh, We'll go ahead and get this thing taken up to a nice nice finish. So uh, if you're interested, feel free to tag along and hopefully you'll learn something. So let's get started. These are the things that I typically use to hand finish a handle in my shop. Since we're aiming for a really high quality finish as crisp and clean transitions, we have to be mindful of the fact that the handle material is less abrasion resistant than the hardware. And that's basically a fancy way of saying that the handle material is going to wear away a lot faster when we're sanding than the guard and the bolt will. That's why our choice of backing material is, is so important. It's very common, especially in a newer maker's work, to see a handle where the guard and the pins, or in this case the bolsters, um, are, are proud of the handle material. And topographically if you look at this they are at a higher level than what the wood is and I'm not afraid to pick on myself this is a this is a wheeler <laughs> it's nice uh, about 20 years old uh, floating around the shop here in a drawer and this was probably an especially good example because this it was curly maple scales and I have 416 bolsters and and Corby bolts and it might not show up real well on camera here but the bolts are definitely at a higher level than than the handle material and that's because I didn't know some of the things I know now about the finish grinding and the, the shaping and sanding and so if you just sand this with a soft material that's what you end up with and, and keep in mind I don't necessarily mean that you're going to have sharp edges. There are no sharp edges around these transitions, but visually it just doesn't look as good as it would if we had a nice smooth plane and the handle material didn't dip down and then rise back up uh, when we transition to the different, different materials. We want a nice smooth plane across this area and we established that by finish grinding on, on the disc sander and now we need to maintain that with our hand sanding because it's, it's easy to, to screw that up with our hand sanding. And so the next step for me 
to sand this area out I use a very rigid backer this simple steel bar and notice I have a radius on my leading edge a sharp corner will tend to either dig in or want to tear our paper which we want to avoid both of those things so this is what I use to to hand sand this area for the rest of the handle uh, some of the different curves around the back and everything I use these paddles like this one uh, shaped so they're comfortable to use and I have a rubber backing on here and this is about a 75 to 80 durometer uh, rubber now if you're not familiar with the uh, durometer it's just a hardness rating for, for rubber like this basically uh, how squishy is it and so uh, 75 to 80 durometer is, is about the same hardness as a typical contact wheel that uh, would be supplied with a 2 by 72 grinder they're not all that hardness but that's pretty typical for most of the professional grade uh, grinders and the contact wheels that are supplied with them uh, this is a similar paddle here similar shape but you'll notice I've got a much thicker background here and this is actually the brick red plumbing gasket material that you can buy at just about any hardware store and I really have no idea what the durometer of it is but I know it's very squishy and it works really well for sending out the ass end of the handle and that's pretty much you know the only place I use it with this thick squishy backing if we were to use it across this plane here it would allow our paper to dip down and we would definitely wash out these areas around the 416 guard and, and bolt and again we don't want to do that we want to keep these crisp and clean so this would be a very poor choice for that area this particular one uh, smaller just because it's I hold it a little bit differently when I'm using it but I use this one to sand out the inside of the guard lugs notice it also has a very prominent leading edge so when my sandpaper is wrapped around here it's very easy for me to see right where I'm at which is really important when cleaning up the guard lugs now typically a lot of my knives anymore these days the inside of the guard lugs I like to do a mirror finish on it just because I really like the the contrasting look this knife however will have a satin finish on the inside of the guard lugs and I'll do that with a fine gray scotch bright and I'll show that later on in the video this particular paddle right here it's kind of funny looking I have a radius piece of that 75 or 80 durometer rubber on here and this one I use it I don't use it a lot but I use it a little bit right in this area and then in the area where our fin uh, pinky and ring finger will reside in this handle so not used a lot but it's very handy for when I do need it and this one gets used very little but I use it just a little bit for the the last little bit of cleanup in those areas and I wish I could give you a really good <laughs> explanation as to what this is for but I honestly don't know uh, it, it was just some fiber reinforced rubber hose that I picked up at my local hardware store and it just happened to fit nicely onto a piece of quarter inch round stock and I made a simple little handle for it and uh, like I said I don't use it a lot but it is handy to have for the very final finish work now for sanding out the sides of the guard I do the initial work with with this it's a very simple sanding stick just a piece of G10 chisel ground allows me to route the paper around nice and tight and then for the finish strokes I have this sanding stick which is really pretty similar but it's a piece of oak I've got the 75 to 80 durometer rubber glued on and then with this taper it allows me to wrap the paper around nice and tight but still very easy to see where I'm at uh, while I'm sanding so uh, then of course I got my uh, Rhino wet red line sandpaper if this was a wood handle I would be sanding it up to at least at least 1200 grit probably higher for the G10 I found that it, a really nice finish is uh, to actually take it up to uh, either 800 or 1200 grit and it kinda depends on 
the the supplier of the G10 and then what color it is on, on what I personally think looks best when we're done. And then of course my uh, knife vise and a little bit of WD-40 and uh, a Wheeler sandpaper knife. So those are the things that I use. Now that you've seen all that, we can go ahead and get started sanding this thing out. Now since we took this up to a worn 500 grit disc on my funky donut sander, we can go ahead and hand sand this with 800 grit real easily. So I'm going to make sure our radius edge is our leading one. Wrap this around nice and tight. And then I try to do this at a little bit of an angle. Just to help prevent washing that out. We're basically keeping part of the sanding bar up on the guard and part of it on the handle material helps to prevent that wash out. And if we did a, a good job with our donut disc, then that's about all that should take to get that at an 800 grit so you can see why I think that funky disc is beneficial for the way I do, do things. For these areas like the recesses, I'll go to this block and I'm going to start with 320 grit and I typically put a little bit of WD-40 on here when I'm working with the G10 and really has very little to do with uh, lubricating the paper. It's, it's more to help keep the dust down and you got to be, be careful with this because you can definitely reshape things with 320 grit. I mean in fact that's that's why I'm starting with the 320s is to make sure that everything is completely smoothed out and symmetrical side to side. And it will probably be hard to tell but I'm mostly going to be sanding with the leading edge so we have a small point of contact. I'm not going to be trying to lay this whole flat onto the handle. Alright, to refine this crown, get everything trued up here, I'm going to use the, the softer backing material and the 320 grit paper again. Uh, hopefully you've been able to tell we've been sanding at an angle like this with our 320 grit and that's leaving sanding striations that are like this. I drew these in with a welding pencil to help help show that. Now once we get everything completely symmetrical and smooth and all our sanding marks going that, in that direction then we want to come back with our 500 grit and we'll sand across those at an angle like so and once all of our sanding marks are running this direction we know that we're completely at a 500 grit finish and we've gotten rid of all the 320 grit and then once we move up to 800 grit then I'll go ahead and sand it this direction and that'll give us a nice finish that uh, actually works with the grain of the G10.